Welcome back to New Jersey Parent Politics. I'm Jim McQueenie. Last week, we dove into the argument over legalizing gay marriage in New Jersey, something Democrats in the state Senate and Assembly will make a top priority this year. Our guest, Len Dale of the New Jersey Family Policy Council, opposed the idea. This week, we'd like to take a chance to air the other side in a previously taped interview with gay marriage advocate and BlueJersey.com blogger, Jay Lassiter. Jay, um, uh, first I have to ask you, there's a lot of politics in this thing, uh, more than as much as there is probably policy on here. For the Democrats sure. to make this their number one priority, above things like the economy, above things like re uh, reducing taxes, above things like school aid and all that type of thing, um, do you suspect, uh, and Blue Jersey's a Democratic-oriented uh, blogging site here, do you suspect that what's going on here is more about the politics than it is the policy? It's definitely both. Um, and as a gay progressive, I'm happy on both counts. Um, certainly, it's very gratifying to see Democrats behaving like Democrats and the Democratic leadership behaving like leaders. So as a partisan, I'm delighted to see that. As a gay person, I can say that this is absolutely about the economy for gay couples and lesbian couples. You know, it's not just about wedding cakes and throwing rice. It's about the fact that my partner and I have been together for eight years and we still cannot file jointly. The fact that I'm on his insurance plan and that's taxed as income. Would that not be cured by civil unions that are permitted? Um, it, because we are unable to be married, you're either married or you're not, um, I, I suppose they would acknowledge the half measure if there was, a, you know, a box to check. You're either married or you're not. My partner's company is in Pennsylvania, so the fact that they're good enough to offer benefits to domestic partner and civil union relationships is just a virtue of, of good business. It's nothing that they're legally compelled to do. So the fact that in Pennsylvania civil unions aren't an option, uh, you're either married in Pennsylvania where my partner works or you're not. We're not. Even if we were civil union, we wouldn't be married. So uh, ostensibly, we can't make the same kinds of deductions. We have to file separately. We are taxed at a much higher rate. Now, in the case of lesbian couples, this is even doubly troubling. It's a double whammy because women historically make, I, I don't know what it is, it's maybe 80 cents on the dollar. Uh, so in, in same-sex female couples, um, it's even more of an economic issue. And in these tough economic times, I hear our opponents talking about we need to focus on the economy. For gays and lesbians living in New Jersey and also for anybody in the wedding industry, this is absolutely about the economy. Well, you look at uh, where it's been, and it's, there's been some faltering steps in the legislature previously, of course. Um, now with a new legislature sworn in and a two-year term ahead of it, um, what would be the timetable for this? Well, first of all, what, what do you think the odds are uh, of this happening? T to be perfectly honest, it's a very long shot, and I would strain my credibility if I told you otherwise. However, as an activist who has been in the trenches since the beginning of the AIDS crisis, I remember what it was like 15 or 20 years ago. So to to sort of reflect on how far we've come, the fact that we're knocking on the door of marriage equality is a remarkable milestone, even though we're not there yet. I believe, as an activist with a long-term view uh, towards justice and equality, that, you know, it's almost par for the course. You've got to fail two or three times. In New York, it went down three times before it finally Well, maybe passed. I should have been more specific in my question. First of all, um, uh, how far do you think you'll get with the, the, the legislature, Democratic-controlled legislature, and when, first of all? I believe that it will be a very revealing test of the Democratic leadership to see how quickly they're able to do it, but I'm actually confident that it will pass both houses. The governor is uh, is another story altogether, which I don't think is a big mystery. Well, let me ask the question for those who don't. It might not be a mystery to you, but do you, uh, he's been on record as saying uh, no way uh, that he's going to further this. Uh, do you think he's gonna, still in the same position now? I suspect um, he is. He said that he's not a fan of gay marriage, which uh, is unfortunate because I'm sure that he would probably uh, he, he, he would probably have a very good time at my gay, gay wedding if, uh, if, if it ever gets to that point. No, I don't think he's going to vote. I don't think he's going to sign it. But um, I think that there's something a little bit uh, satisfying as a partisan for me to watch the Republicans get heartburn with this issue. There are a lot of moderate Republicans who are either going to be Christie's handmaiden and go along with his, his views on this issue, or they're going to vote with uh, 
public opinion and uh, vote with their moderate uh, constituents and vote for marriage equality. All right, Jay Lasseter, I did hear an invitation to the governor to your wedding in there somewhere. Well, y you know, I would love for Chris Christie to come to, to my gay wedding. And, and Governor Christie, if you're out there, uh, we would love to have you. My partner, Greg, and I would love to have you and Mary Pat. All right, very good, Jay Lasseter, thanks. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back with more after the break.